Hello guys and welcome to the FM Network. I'm Miju FM and I am back to bring you a brand new video. But before we get started, please be sure to hit that sub button on the network channel and don't forget to pop on over onto my channel and do the same if you would like to as well. But for now, let's check out what today's video is about. Okay guys, and in today's video I will be going through a tactic that I have created on a save that I currently have ongoing on my channel called Inglorious Bastards. In this save, I am Real Sociedad and I have found a tactic that I have built around my players which has led me to League and Europa League glory. So now let's check out the ins and outs of this tactic. So as you can see from this screen guys, we managed to win La Liga and the Europa League with Real Sociedad in the first season. The tactic was created around the fact that I noticed a lot of the players within this squad had very high aggression attributes, as you can see here, with all of these guys having a 12 or above. Also, another attribute that I focused on was the high teamwork ethic within the team. As you can see here, all these highlighted players here are from 12 up to 19 within their teamwork. And finally, the third attribute that I focused on was the high work rate within the team as well. So I wanted to create a tactic based around those mental attributes that would be an aggressive, high pressing formation that would basically try and focus on suffocating the opposition's defence as quickly as possible. So now let's check out the formation and the instructions for this tactic. So as you can see guys, this is what I would call Miju Theory heavy rain. The whole idea as I mentioned is for these forward players to press high and be aggressive in their play with the wing backs being the main outlets for the assists. We have an aggressive defence as well with two ball playing defenders and a libero on attack. The idea of this is as the team push forward the deep line playmaker sits and then the libero joins the attack from deep adding an extra element going forward. You see here we have an attacking mentality and in possession we play with a wide width playing out of the defence with playing through the middle but using the fullbacks to overlap on the right and the left. We try to be more expressive and our directness in our passing is slightly more direct than you would normally have but the tempo is extremely high. We avoid playing into the box or hitting those early crosses but we do try to whip the crosses when we can. In transition, we counter press and we counter. We distribute to the centre backs and we use short goal kicks to do that as well. Out of possession, we play a higher line, but not right up to the, as much as we can, just slightly lower. But we push the defence higher to keep this little group here as close as possible without exposing the deep line playmaker too much. Our defensive width is standard, but we do try to prevent short goalkeeper distribution and have an extremely urgent intensity within our press. We don't use the offside trap, and we don't get stuck in or use tight marking either. So if we go back to the player roles, we can see we use a sweeper keeper to be able to come out and support the defence if and when, when needs be. The two ball playing defenders are on defend, but their main idea is to get the ball from the keeper and then either bring it forward if they can or play it to the deep line playmaker who's usually available or if not out wide. The libero on attack as I mentioned his main role is to join the attack but also help out in defence so when we're defending we have three at the back and two wing backs but when we're going forward we have the two defenders sitting back with the libero joining in. The deep line playmaker is on defend just create a bit of balance so that not everyone is going forward and the wing backs are on support. As I said their main job is to provide the assists and we will look at that in a little bit as well and how they did. And then our front four consists of an attacking midfielder on support next to an attacking support striker behind a pressing forward on attack and an advanced forward on attack. Now these two players and you see here we've got Bellotti and Isaac have been absolutely instrumental in our pressing and attacking. As you can see, if we move over to here, Alexander Isaac scored 48 goals in all competitions, with Bellotti, his strike partner, 
136. Iathabal and Depay in behind scored 20 and 15 respectively, which helps give us a very good attacking quartet throughout the season. OK, just to look at some of the transfers to show you the thinking behind why we brought some of these players in and how they helped as well. You can see here that the main guys are Bellotti. If we look at his attributes, you can see he has that high aggression of 15, teamwork of 17 and work rate of 18. But he also has great finishing, bravery, anticipation, everything you would want from that pressing forward. Memphis Depay come, came in. Although he didn't have the aggression, his teamwork and work rate were fairly good. Um, and within this system, as it's even though it's focused around aggression, teamwork and work rate, you can get away with a couple of players being a little bit lower because the rest of the team are of a high standard. Our main defender that we brought in was Gianluca Mancini. And you can see here, aggression of 16, teamwork of 16, work rate of 18. We also brought in Marcus Alonso with 12 aggression, 14 teamwork and 15 work rate. Eric Garcia came in from Manchester City. Again, 12 aggression, 14 teamwork, 15 work rate. And Audrey Zola, as the right back, comes in with 12 aggression, 12, 14 teamwork and 16 work rate as well. So even the players that we brought in, we focus on those attributes needed for this formation. Some of the players already at the club, people like Oyathabal, he already had 13 aggression, 14 teamwork, 16 work rate. And we see here, even people like Ilaramendi, who's a bit on the older side of the team, but he does, again, have 15 aggression, 19 teamwork and 17 work rate. So whilst there are a couple of players in the team that don't have all of the attributes needed, most of the team do and that is one of the key reasons why this formation and this tactic works so if we just go to the competitions click on la liga you can see here we finished the season as champions with 99 points from 38 games we won 32 drew three and lost three scoring 99 goals and only conceding 20 goals throughout the season so if we look through the season, you can see there are a lot of green dots for the wins that we have achieved. Of course, there were a few games where we lost, and you can see most of them happen here. But some of them were for various reasons, such as changing the squad around, playing the players like the backup players that don't have necessarily the attributes required, such as in the Spanish Cup. We were playing a lot of games within every three days, so some of the times we had to rest those players. So in this game, we played a almost completely second team and lost that 1-0. Real Madrid seemed to have our number in this season, beating us 5-0 in the Super Cup, as well as 3-1 in the league. In the other game, we drew 1-1. We did have a shock result against Ibar. Again, it was just one of those games where sometimes you have a lot of chances and they just don't get converted, and that was one of them. And similar happened to, against Granada, which was a few days after our Europa League game. The only other losses we had were in the Europa League, and whilst they were quite heavy, in the sense of a 5-2 defeat to Lazio and a 4-1 defeat to AC Milan, these were counteracted by the first legs, where we beat AC Milan 5-1 and beat Lazio 4-1, which took us all the way to the final, where we beat Bayer Leverkusen 3-2. Of course, if you want to check these games and check the videos, this series, Inglorious Basketball, is on my channel. So again, please be sure to head on over and subscribe to my channel and watch what, watch how the season unfolded. But this season contained a lot of high scoring games as well. You can see here we beat Huesca 5-1, Celta Vigo 7-0, again AC Milan was 5-1, Atalanta we beat 5-3, 4-1 against Athletic Bilbao, 6-0 against Getafe, we had a little run here of a 5-1, 4-1 against Barcelona, 4-2 as well, leading all the way back to the beginning of the season with other high scoring games. If we were just to go and look at my profile for a second, 
you can see the career stat after this first season I ended with an 82% win rate. We scored 161 goals in total, only conceding 51. The club goal difference was 110. And as I mentioned, we won the league and the Europa League. If we look here at the games played, we played 56 games, winning 46, drawing 3 and losing only 7. If we were to go and check out some of the, some of the stats throughout the season, we can see here we scored the most goals within the league, scoring 99, with Barcelona second on 82. We averaged 2.61 points per game, and we had the most shots throughout the season with 635 shots. We were third on the fewest shots against with only 270. But in the possession, you won't find us near the top of the table of that, purely because this is about winning the ball back as quickly as possible and then within a few passes attacking and hopefully scoring this isn't based around ball retention this is a bit this is based on attack being aggressive and being a, a nuisance really again we scored 99 goals in 38 matches which left us with 2.61 goals per game and an expected goals of 79. So we, we actually scored 20 goals more than we were expected to score in the season. We were third on cross completion with 22%, which mainly came from our fullbacks, which was their job within the system. We had the best conversion rate with 15%, and we averaged 16.71 shots per game. You can see we finished bottom for dribbles per game attempted because Again, that isn't the, the idea of this tactic. The, the tactic is to win the ball and release it as quickly as possible. Holding on to the ball doesn't help the formation or the players in any way. So the whole idea is to release it, to score the goals as quickly as possible. Again, we conceded 20 goals throughout the season, but our expected goals against was 30, meaning we actually let in... 10 goals less than expected as well. Again, just to reiterate, we finished second on clean sheets. Our tackles one percentage was 83, finishing second only behind Real Betis. Again, this emphasizes key aspect of our tactic of winning the ball back and then distributing it quickly. So with the second highest, that shows how effective we have been at defending, winning the ball back and turning over possession as quickly as possible. And you can see here, possession won, we won possession 2,805 times. Also, interceptions, we finished top with 619. If we were to check out some of the player stats from the season, we can see that Alexander Isaac scored 29 goals within the league, finishing ahead of Inaki Williams and his strike partner, Andrea Velotti. And our fullbacks in Marcus Alonso and Ander Baronesia finished joint first with Lionel Messi, with 15 assists each within the league season. You can see here, Alexander Isaac had an average of 5.46 shots per game, with Belotti in fourth with 3.5. Isaac's goal to 90 minutes ratio was 1.14, with Belotti again in fourth with 0.65. Isaac's expected goals were 17, and Belotti's 16. So again, both of those players way outdid their expected goals. As mentioned, Baronesia and Alonso had 15 assists each in the league season, taking their totals to 21 and 20 for the whole season as well. So if we look at the players' statistics throughout the season, we can see here that the best average rating was Alexander Isaac with 7.49, followed closely behind by Ayathabal on 7.29, and Belotti on 7.23. With the goals, there were quite a few spread out from front to back, with Isaac on 48, Belotti on 36, Ayathabal getting 20, Depay 15, Arezzo, Lopez, Auer on 7, with David Silva on 4, and then the rest being made up from some of the more of the bit part players or defensive players. Most assists went to Ander Baronesi with 21, and then Marcus Alonso finished second on 20, with Ayathabal on 17, 
but Lottie and Depay 13 apiece and David Silva 110. One of the things to worth mentioning though is that Ilara Mendy, who was one of the first choice deep line playmakers, finished bottom on a 6.70. So there might be issues with the effectiveness of that deep line playmaker in the middle, but his main role isn't necessarily to create, but to be available to have the ball, to receive the ball, and then to lay it off to the fullbacks or the people in front of him. So he he finished with no goals and no assists, but he wasn't in the team to provide those anyway. But that in the future could be something that maybe you could play around with rather than playing a deep line playmaker, see what other position works for you. So as you can see from all that info, Miju Fury, Heavy Rain, provides lots of goals, lots of assists, is aggressive, it's fun to play, and overall, it's a very successful tactic to play with. With an 82% win ratio over the course of a season, with a team that you don't even expect to be in those positions come the end of the season, I'm very pleased with how this tactic has turned out. It's also worth mentioning that I ran this tactic with PSG as well. And again, it turned out to be a very successful tactic for them, with Mbappe scoring 59 goals throughout the season and his strike partner Icardi getting 41, with Neymar on 16 with 17 assists. You can see here the fullbacks in the PSG system of Florenzi and Bernat got really high assists again, with 20 for Florenzi and 25 for Bernat. So, again, the main attributes from this tactic, which I spoke about, being about the assists coming from the fullbacks. And then these four players causing havoc shows that it's effective as well. The only reason why I did it with PSG and not somebody else is because I do believe this tactic requires a certain type of player. As I've mentioned, high aggression, high teamwork and high work rate. I don't really think it will work with players who can't do the roles or have those attributes because it's a very demanding formation there are some times where the defense have to work really hard to win the ball back so you, they need to have those attributes to be able to do that but if we see here PSG won the league got knocked out in the semi-finals against Real Madrid of the Champions League but won the trophy des champions in France as well so again another successful season for PSG and another successful season for Miju Fury, Heavy Rain. Okay, guys, that's all from me today. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And please do let me know if you choose to try this tactic out. I'll be very, very interested to see how you get on. In the meantime, I'd just love to say a massive thank you again to the guys at FM Network for allowing me to be on their channel once again. And please do be sure to hit the subscribe button for the FM Network, as well as popping along onto my channel and doing the same if you like what I do. But for now, thank you for watching. Take care of yourself and I'll see you very soon.